Um, there's a number of things that, that really excite me about this initiative. I think first and foremost, you know, this is an opportunity for us to think about client-centered service. Right? When we think about service design, thinking human-centered design, um, the, the brass tacks of that is, is data collection, how we do that on the ground level, how we support frontline workers to do it effectively. You know, how do we move from data as a chore to data as a win? And I think the opportunity with, with Health Cities policy-wise is to, to think about that conversation, not just at the abstract uh, theoretical side, but how do we implement this? You know, how do we identify common schema and ways of organizing our data so that clients have the ability to move their data from organization to organization? How do we think about data differently? You know, how do we think about data as not belonging to organizations, but as data really belonging to the individuals who we're serving and them having autonomy and sovereignty over that data? What the, the success of this initiative will hinge on more than anything is um, a practical pilot implementing things, testing ideas out. One of our challenges in the sector is we love meetings, right? It's very, very easy to get a commitment from an organization saying, hey, I want three of your senior staff to meet bi-weekly for three years. Oh yeah, sure, no, no problem. Think nothing of it. Um, but it's like, hey, I wanna spend a little bit of money on implementing and trying out a new tool. Whoa, risky. That's hard to do. Maybe we should back off. I don't know if we want to do that. Um, you know, we don't want to bootstrap, we don't want to test, and we don't want to practice a different way of working. And I think the stakes are too high not to do that, right? We're working with vulnerable clients. The security of their data, the integrity of the, the way we've recorded it leaves so much to be desired. Um, the way we need to work needs to be testing, that needs to be practically demonstrating what an alternative can be. So I think success for me is, is an implementation and testing, that we practice things, that we are showing what something could look like, and that people are getting better service as a result. I think one of the biggest things is thinking about our, our risk aversion in the sector, right? And how do we address risk aversion, right? How do we, um, you know, as sector partners start to realize that we are the ones with lived experience and depth in the room and think about, you know, the way we procure and build differently. You know, oftentimes when we think about um, data, that really hinges on software. And how we think about software often in the sector is software is um, designed at us, sometimes for us, um, maybe, maybe with us, but very rarely if ever by us. And I think that by us approach really matters. And you know, talking with the, the different collaborators in the health cities room, I see that need for the software to be by us. Uh, for it to have the the voice voices of experience, for it to actually really focus on how do you make a social worker's day to day better? You know, how do you take data from a shorted data as a win? Um, how do we think about you know the practical realities of their work, the small nitty details that could make the difference between it being a, uh, a crummy day and it being a great day, and build around that. You know, a simple example is thinking about, you know, the classic methodology of software development in the sector is waterfall, right? That means that dictates come on from high up. You know, you write out uh, an RFP, you detail as much stuff as possible, you put it out to tender, um, two bids and a buy, you get something back and invariably everybody ends up hating it because the software is antagonistic to them, right? It was designed... Um, maybe to you know do business to business transactions. You know, maybe it wasn't even designed for a human at all. Uh, and I see a real need to disrupt that in talking to the other people in the room. Right? We 
we need to think about a simple example, right? Um, of that waterfall methodology might be that you specify phone number as a mandatory field. That's a reasonable thing to do in any database, right? But the reality of the clients we deal with is they are vulnerable. They're often in challenging circumstances and they might not have a phone number. And so if you make phone number a mandatory field based on what was written in some spec sheet, um, what you force a social worker to do is to enter rubbish data. And that rubbish data stays with that client for years on end. The impact of that is that we can't do longitudinal research. We can't use machine learning. Uh, we can't communicate with people in a robust way. And our data integrity is you know, pretty, uh, pretty undesirable. Now, if we think about what that scenario might look like in software design by the sector, you know, we might choose to say, hey, phone number should be uh, a field with an expiration date. Every time we interact with someone or every three months, we prompt them, right? Because we know they're going through complex situations. We put notes in the field to say what might be happening so that, oh, we know like Charles is um, without a phone right now because of X, Y, ask him in a month or help Charles get a phone. You know, those are the ways that software by the sector can change. I think uh, coming back to what success looks like, it's are we testing these ideas out? You know, prior to this initiative, Bissell and ourselves, uh, Islamic family, were working together. And we learned a ton from, from what they'd done from the, the bumps they'd gone through and come up with great solutions for. What I'm really excited about this initiative is seeing those sorts of collaborations proliferate. Can we, can we not just talk about what best practices are, but demonstrate them and give other organizations the abilities to adopt them? So what I'd say there is, you know, what uh, what advice would I give other nonprofits? And I think it's it's to put service design thinking, uh, to put the client, to put the the social worker at the forefront of design. I think our default um, is that we actually probably put funders and the people reporting to funders at the forefront of our design process. Those are the decision makers choosing the tool. And the decisions they make are natural, right? They're going to make decisions around what makes reporting easier. But that misses the biggest part of the work, right? Oftentimes we have in organizations agitation between the people who have to do reporting and the people who have to do collection, right? The people doing reporting are always like, oh, why aren't the front line getting me the data I want, right? And, you know, the reason is, is because they, they have horribly designed tools. Um, the tools don't work for them, right? And we need, to, we need to examine that paradigm. We need to think about it from a systems, uh, systems change perspective. We need to think about the tools we're using as perpetuating systemic inequity. And we need to work collectively at policy and advocacy. And so I think two strong policy asks we need to be working on at this moment is we need to be thinking about how do we get the get government at different levels to accept a common reporting standard, right? You know, even if you think about sometimes even within departments within the province, they are asking for different reporting templates, right? What we need is some standardization in that, right? There's still always going to be a degree of customization, but what can we standardize? And um, and the, the impact of that is, you know, less repetitive work for agencies and less repetitive work for government. Uh, the second major policy ask is Albertans should be able to move their data between government funded agencies. You know, if someone visits our office and they want to take that data with them to Bissell or Jewish Family Services, they should be equipped to do so.
Yeah, great question. I think you know some of the the interesting reflections are, you know, when it comes to data and data collection, um, you know, we all agree that we want impact measurements, but when we face the complexity of that, we often revert to what is familiar, right? It's uh, it's too difficult to say I want to measure goals because goals are very different across different groups. Let's go back to measuring how many people came, right? Uh, and I think it's it's really important that we actually go through that hurdle of complexity to build systems that work. And you know, I think what Bissell has done is a, a great demonstration of this, right? The self sufficiency matrix gives us a really strong starting point for looking at clients, looking at their assets and looking at what's important to them, gives us a common lexicon to talk about problems. So if one organization says, um, so-and-so is out of three out of five in housing security, you know, we, can, we can both be uh, on the same page as to what that means, right? That's a complex challenge that's understandable and we just have to work through it and push for greater adoption.